It's time to take a look at the Sphere of Time in this week's Welcome to Mastora. This is the second go-around for the topic, but it looks like it's back in fashion. I'm covering the Eleven Immortals with the most background in history, pulling from the Immortals book, as well as Wrath and the Codex Immortalis by Del Monte. There's a lot of Immortals that only got a passing mention with a few lines, and I'm not going to go into the ones I would have to pad out. I'm Mr. Welch, and let's talk time. Going in descending order of power means we start with the Hierarch Coronas, who is the patron of time, but also history, government, diplomacy, and about a half a dozen other related topics. Coronas is one of the few immortals that ascended during Blackmore's time, as most of them died out or were forgotten when all their worshippers blew up in the Great Reign of Fire. He is unique among the immortals, because through his experiments in creating time machines to save his followers from the upcoming apocalypse, he accidentally ascended to immortality. He teaches his followers to value patience above all else, and they should contemplate the impact of their actions before they do them. His followers are also involved in politics, not for power, but to prevent abuses or disasters like Blackmore. He is also trying to find out the fate of the original immortals of Mastara and the true identities of the old ones. He thinks the previous immortals could have been linked to a similar disaster like Blackmore. Ordana is the only treant to ever achieve immortality before the civilized races were even created. She believes her patron was the time-traveling Coronas, she is the creator of the elves, as well as the sylvan races. When most of her elven followers abandoned her worship to turn to Blackmore's ways, she instructed the rest to leave the area and travel north to new elven lands. This is before Blackmore blew the planet off its axis, so there's no way of telling which direction north is from Blackmore now. She is the most powerful of the nature-oriented immortals, though she's lost most of her elven followers to immortals ascended from elves. A sizable number still revere her. She is benevolent and a loving immortal, who has multiple forms depending on which race she's worshipped by. She treasures the wilderness, and she adamantly opposes the uncontrolled growth of cities. Proteus is the unrivaled patron of the ocean. He's not as powerful as he could be, but the other immortals leave him alone as his domain does not interest them. He has one of the largest followings of worshippers. Anyone who lives near or under the ocean offers a prayer to Proteus. Since Mastara has a lot of coastlines, that's a lot of worshippers. The Immortal is known for being fickle as well as a loner. He has few allies and fewer enemies. He doesn't interfere in the politics of land-dwelling creatures or their Immortals. Whether he listens to the prayer of his followers depends entirely on his mood. Because of his hands-off nature, undersea creatures have very different belief systems that they attribute to him. While his temperament is usually mercurial, creatures that help with matters concerning the ocean or its creatures will find him aiding in their endeavors whether they want his help or not. Vanya is one of the best-known immortals because she is one of the most active. She represents the patron of war and victory and is one of the most worshipped immortals in Thyatis. Born just before the Thyatian tribes fled the Millennium Empire, she held off the Empire's troops so her people could escape into what is now modern-day Thyatis. Her entire life, all she knew was war. It shaped her philosophy. War was the only way to bring societal change. Strong societies were better because they could defend their ideas. Weak cultures were destroyed along with their philosophies, so their beliefs were weak as well. Her followers, specifically the Heldonic Knights, took this teaching to heart and unleashed a war on the Heldon Freeholds. Vanya only asked for one thing, total victory. If her follower is defeated, he wasn't worthy of being her follower. She also teaches her followers the importance of fair rulership, for if they become tyrants, another follower will come along to defeat them. She has no allies and numerous enemies. She cares about none of them because she will conquer them all. Fugit has a strange position in the Sphere of Time, as his power puts him firmly in the middle of the hierarchy, but his role in the Sphere is one of the most important. He is the patron of maintaining the flow of time. In a Sphere known for causing temporal paradoxes, it's his job to fix them. Fugit is the enforcer of the Sphere of Time. It was he who used time magic to erase the memory of Nithia. His magic locked away the Carnifex for all time. Anything that threatened the flow of time, he was the instrument of the Immortal's judgment. He is the most outspoken foe of the Hollow World and the Spell of Preservation. He feels the spell is harmful to the civilizations it was meant to save. He is rigid in his thinking, but does not resort to forcing his beliefs, instead allowing his more diplomatic allies to work on a solution. His followers are some of the world's foremost historians, and a good number of them are wizards who are keen to prevent disruptions in the time flow that could threaten the world. Kalitha Starbrow is the patron of the aquatic elves and a good number of coastal dwelling races. She's worshipped by turtles and surprisingly by the Wallara of the Savage Coast. She's seen as an alternative to the unpredictable Proteus by sailors. She was an Aqua Rendi elf from before the time of Blackmore. She encourages her followers to maintain the ocean's ecology, never taking too much or destroying vital areas like reefs. She is considered a rival to Proteus, but he is so detached he doesn't notice her, and she does understand this. 
She is openly supportive of her followers and is known as a patron of good luck and fertility. It's probably only a matter of time before she passes Proteus in power for control of the sea, though there's a good chance he won't even notice or care. Petra is one of the patrons of Trolladara and a beloved immortal by her people. Unlike the caring Vanya, she is a patron of war, but Petra is about protecting one's people rather than conquest. The two immortals despise each other, but Petra has the upper hand in Karamikos because of her fire-forged alliance with Halov and Zerchev. She can be a harsh immortal if necessary. She demands her followers stand up for themselves. Petra will gladly lend aid to besieged cities or defenders against aggression, but her followers are expected to fight back with everything they have. Her worshippers have a large number of warrior clerics among their ranks. These followers take the fight to those that would oppress them, but never wage war for the sake of conquest. Chardastes came from Nithian stock before his people turned to the worship of entropy. He is the patron of medicine and healing, a title he gladly shares with a host of other immortals. His greatest goal is to restore much of the knowledge on medicine that he had discovered to the world that was lost when the Nithian Empire was erased from memory. His followers had a bit of a resurgence when he helped stop a plague in Karamikos, which allowed him to join the pantheon of the Church of Karamikos. He doesn't have many allies outside of the Immortals of Healing, but his work is appreciated. His list of enemies is extensive. It's a who's who of the worst of the Entropic Immortals. His work stands directly in conflict with their goals. Fortunately for him, he doesn't have a lot of allies, but he has a large number of Immortals that respect him. A move against him by the Entropic Immortals would result in overwhelming retaliation from his supporters. Brinder Horn is the patron protector of the Hen. He has freed the Five Shires numerous times during his quest for immortality, as he was sent forward in time to free his people to prove his worthiness. He helped free his people from dwarves, orcs, pirates, and Thaetians before ascending. He formed the Pantheon of the High Heroes along with Cobberham and Nobnar, and also became the halfling patron of Abundance. Brinderhorn has taken up protecting the Hen family and promoting marriage among the small folk. He serves as the public face of the Five Shires, as Cobberham is secretive, and Nobnar generally only appeals to the young. Their pantheon is inseparable, with Brinderhorn balancing the impulsive Nobnar and the more conservative Cobberham. Yav is the patron of diviners and seers, as well as the favored immortal of his home nation of Yavdalum. He was born mixed race with heritage from both elves and humans, and he was caught in a war between the elves and humans over the interbreeding of the races. He found himself unable to quell the violence, and as the leader of the Tanagorans with mixed blood, he found himself in mortal danger. His divination abilities were powerful, but they were tied to the region that would bear his name. He discovered the artifact that was causing the large number of seers in the region, and this artifact allowed him to travel in time. He returned to his land in the future, and used his knowledge to drive out the seers that had corrupted the nation. He traveled time repeatedly to fix the artifact until he was finally able to save his people and found Yavdalum. Despite his power, he is known for being quite humble. A large number of other immortals frequently seek him out for his wisdom. The last of the time immortals is Al-Kalim, most famous for his worship in Yalaram. He is a relatively new immortal, having ascended with the help of Proteus. He is both a patron of war and knowledge, encouraging his people to expand his teachings and to defend their freedom. This has caused problems with his followers, with two factions focusing on their patron's dual nature. He tries to teach them to balance the message, but some of the followers have become fanatical in their beliefs. His religion is spreading quickly, reaching Irindi and into parts of the Savage Coast. He is still building his allies among immortals, a slow process, as he is unmoving in promoting his teachings, though his position is slowly softening. That's a rundown on the most popular Immortals of Time. I covered about half of them, as many of the others were only mentioned in passing in the Immortal Level modules. There are no evil Immortals of Time, and only a few good ones, as the Pantheon is dominated primarily by the Neutral Alignment. I am sticking with the Immortals. The first round through, you didn't care much about them outside of Entropy. Next up on the list is the Immortals of Matter, the Conservatives of Mastara. Feel free to give this one another chance, or you could select from the list of topics that have been lingering near the top for the last two months. But until then, remember, be excellent to everyone.